What if you had a credit score that didn't just count the money you use, the money you owe, or the money you save? What if you had a credit score that measured the kind of citizen you are? This week, we are exploring a very strange concept, a social credit score. It's called Sesame Credit. You have heard of this possibly in the news. Uh, it goes back a few years. It's still in sort of a pilot program. Sesame Credit is being created by the Chinese government via what's called the Ant Financial Services Group. Ant Financial Services Group is affiliated with Alibaba, which is sort of, think of it like a China-based Amazon, but much more successful. As of April 2016, Alibaba is, became the world's largest retailer. So Alibaba and, and Ant Financial are also affiliated with this thing called Alipay, A-L-I Pay. Alipay, this is a little bit dry, but it's important, is in charge of financial transactions. Um, and it, it's a third party platform that allows transactions to occur without a transaction fee. And they're working with the big boys. They've got MasterCard, Visa, what have you. This market that Alipay controls uh, would be about a little less than half of all the online payment markets in China. That may not sound like a big deal, but let's consider that in 2015, China had a population of around 1.3 billion people. And of those people who have any kind of financial business online, almost half of them are going through this one place. And this one place is giving financial data to this one thing called Sesame Credit. And Sesame Credit, then, with all of this data, uh, it aggregates it and it gives people a certain score. Uh, we've heard conflicting information about how it pulls this in and what exactly its algorithm is. If you're watching this within a few years of this video coming out, Sesame Credit is currently an opt-in system, but there are concerns. Its opponents allege that the um, official statements about Sesame Credit, both from the spokespeople, from government officials and what have you, are not entirely honest, that they're disingenuous. Because the question becomes not just a question of measuring financial information and then assigning a score based on that, which is, you know, a, a credit score is ultimately the likelihood that a person will pay off a loan or make good on a debt. But this system, according to a statement from representatives of the company, also looks at the type of things you buy. And they're a little bit murky about how detailed this investigation or analysis is. So for example, according to the statement, if they see that someone is spending 10 hours a day in their living room on their couch, uh, playing video games, making in-app purchases, then they will think this is a more idle or sedentary person. However, if they see somebody is uh, buying diapers now, then they will say they're probably uh, a parent. And if they're a parent, then on balance, they're probably going to be more responsible. So in that first case, the score may fall a little. In the second case, the score may rise a little. And it's a question, again, of how deep do they go? Here's what critics are worried about. What if this evolves past just a financial aggregator? What about your social media? What if you post a link that is you know, censored or politically subversive or divisive? What if you seem to support a dissident group? Well, then of course your score would lower, but here's the kicker. What if they do that sort of Kevin Bacon connection game? What if your score also depends on your friend's score? And this becomes dangerous if this happens because it allows for social pressure. It's a subversion of the old state surveillance models, wherein instead of having a top-down thing that enforces stability through uh, the rule of fear, the fear of consequence, it incentivizes other people to say to their, you know, their relative, their friend, their spouse, their kid, their parents, don't do this, don't, don't post this thing, stop going to this, right? Because you are lowering my score. And the big question is what happens if your score improves. If it's like a credit score, then it means it's easier for you to get loans, right? Start that small business. It's easier for uh, paperwork to be processed for a travel visa. Currently, Sesame Credit says that there are not going to be any 
penalties, but people will be rewarded for their trustworthiness, which is a fairly obtuse statement, and there's no way around that. The algorithm is the stuff they don't want you to know, as is the ultimate plan and aim of Sesame Credit. And a lot of this may sound like alarmism. You know, someone running around screaming the sky is falling, George Orwell is rolling over in his grave, and soon you will not be able to live without some sort of eye on the digital shadow of your life. And maybe that would be completely true. But there is one seed of doubt planted here. The system is opt-in now. But in 2020, it becomes mandatory. And that means that whether they like it or not, everyone living there will have a Sesame Credit score. Maybe this will change slowly by degree, like frogs in slowly boiling water, or like Facebook's privacy policy. What this means is that there are important, crucial, profound questions that will come up in the future, in the very near future. You may be watching this video in 2020, and if so, we'd love to hear what your experience is if you have a mandatory Sesame Credit account. In the meantime, while we wait for the future to rush at us headlong like a car collision, write to us. Let us know in the comments. Is this a good thing overall? Does this promote stability? Does this promote unity? Does it give people a chance to be evaluated in a more fair manner? Or is the potential for it to be a tool of oppression? Is it the ultimate aim of the program? At this point, there's not enough evidence either way to say for sure, but one thing is for certain. The evolution of technology is outpacing the evolution of legislation, the evolution of, of social mores, and technology is inherently disruptive. What's going to happen when this stuff comes into full force and all the old mores and all the old ways of doing things shatter into a thousand pieces or 1.393 billion. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more, please tune in to our audio podcast about the rise and the future of Sesame Credit. And as always, if you have feedback and you'd rather not leave them in the comments, if you'd like to talk to Matt, Noel, Scully, and I directly, we'd love to hear from you. You can write to us directly at conspiracy at howstuffworks.com.